On Tech Today, it's always our endeavor to really see which sector technology is disrupting all the time, whether it's auto, business, lifestyle, fashion. And then there's the creative world. There's Bollywood, there's filmmaking, there's so much to what technology can do to make your lives a whole lot easier and prettier in this case. I'm here at the exclusive screening and Mami Select where we've seen a bunch of films and I kid you not, they've all been shot on an iPhone 15 Pro Max. And the creative geniuses who've really used this technology to the maximum are the legendary Vishal Bhardwaj and Pratik Watts. What a pleasure to have you on Tech Today, sirs. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you. Vishalji, I'm going to start off with you. Last year around, we saw on uh, Fursat is a film that was an award-winning film by you, shot on an iPhone 14 Pro. Every year, we keep telling our audience, should we upgrade from the 14 Pro to the 15 Pro? This one is a strong case to upgrade? Yeah, I think I, the whole credit goes to Pratik. <laughs> I've done nothing in this. And uh, yeah, the all everything is done by him. And it's so beautiful, it's so deep. This film, it has such a you know, deep layer of uh, looking into the human psyche and there's so many messages in this. Great I think we've work. seen your work, standing ovation, congratulations Thank you to so both much. of you, of course. And, and like Vishalji is giving you all the credit, it's fascinating that this was all done on an iPhone and even the edit was done within the Apple ecosystem. So all of us tech enthusiasts are genuinely impressed and curious. Is this genuinely done on an iPhone? Not even one shot used that was not from an iPhone, maybe a Sony camera or something else? <laughs> no, no, not at all. <laughs> no, but really, this, this new upgrade is, it's, it's not just one generation. It's like they've leaped five, ten generations in one sort of model. And the kind of control it gives you over, like you said, low light, dynamic range, the, the, just the ability to have, to have so much control in post-production over colors, exposure, this, that. It just, I think it's quite a leap in what uh, we have in this new package. Um, and it just empowers you to make the film you want to make. You yeah. know, that's the main criteria. And when, if somebody is just starting out and she's asking me, is this good enough? I will say, yeah, go for it. Well, all right, Vishalji, it's, it's fascinating. And you started off you know, uh, using all sorts of cameras, some of the massive projects you've worked on, documentaries and then feature films. And then now we're actually talking about a handheld device. Is this something you could genuinely use in some of the feature films? These are some fantastic short films we've seen, but when you're doing the next Kamine, the next Saad Khun Maaf, is this something that you could genuinely use as, as perhaps a camera, or maybe a secondary camera in a big project as well? Actually, we have been doing that, you know, it, we, uh, we can't pinpoint that. Yeah. But we have been using so many shots of iPhone in our films. Yeah. Uh, you know, when we go to a public place where we are not able to get a permission or it's very difficult to get a permission, we do a gorilla shoot, we go and shoot on iPhone. Mm, it's good to know that some of the sound production principles that we follow, Vishalji also corroborates them as well. But Pratik, it's, it's fascinating that one, this was on an iPhone, but then let's talk about the edit process, right? Because I know within the Apple ecosystem, it gets very easy. You're using your iPhone, you have your AirPods, you have your Apple Watch, all of it is synced with iCloud, and it becomes much easier to go through that process. If you have a particular device, pe kuch shoot kiya hai, airdrop se, you can put it on the other one as well. Massive files. Before coming here, I was trying to edit my show, 10 GB, 20 GB of files straight onto my iMac. Does that really help as well that you're on the M3 Max? It's perhaps one of the best, strongest, most powerful laptops out if there. If this is one of the strongest, I don't know what the strongest is. <laughs> because it's clearly, clearly, it, it's, it's a fabulous machine. And it's difficult to put it in words because once we are editing and rendering and exports, and that takes a huge chunk of our time and headspace, you know. And just to be in that ecosystem where this is not a hassle, you know, you can do multiple things, it can handle multiple big resolution files, and the, you, you're not waiting, everything is happening real time. So it just, it's, I, I can't put it in words how liberating that is, how, yeah. how, how easy it makes it, yeah. how you, you want to see something, you take an export, you can share it. Everything happens very, very quickly. But as a last question, Vishalji, you see some of these stories that were told today, even, even the first film we saw at the premiere, Crossing Borders. These are fascinating human stories. Is it important to tell these stories a lot more, maybe in mainstream cinema? What are your thoughts on that? Yeah, so the liberation is not just a technical liberation, you know, that uh, it frees you from so many hassles of hiring the equipment and, you know, or a heavy or a big equipment. I think the bigger uh, liberation is of telling the stories you want to tell. You can tell anything because you are not bound by uh, the burden of, you know, the money or the equipment and right. so many things. 
in terms of the subject, the content and the formats now, you can shoot them clearly on your iPhone. What a pleasure to have this conversation with you guys. It's fascinating, reassuring for us tech enthusiasts to know that technology is becoming that leveler, is democratizing everything. An absolute pleasure if, if two absolute geniuses can back that thought as well. What a pleasure to have you on the Thank show. You. Michelle Ji, Thank Pratik, you. more power to you. And please catch the film. It's available on YouTube as soon as this episode airs. I'll see you soon. The new Mahindra XUV 400 Pro. Now, I just want to say something right at the start. Sometimes, as creators and as journalists, we say things, but then there's always scope for improvement. And while all these top companies can correct things and make things even better, even I have a chance to stand corrected. And that's one line, your headline already, the XUV 400 updated in 2024. I said a lot of things about it in 2023, but it looks like things have changed. And that's what we're going to be discussing on Tech Today. Now, we've been testing the XUV 400 for a few days. And if you spotted us with this one on the road, the new 2024 edition, you'd say it looked exactly like the one we'd reviewed earlier. And I had certain thoughts about that, like I said earlier, because this looks very similar. But there are some things which were right, so you don't need to fix what's not broken. For instance, this is a very commanding presence on the road, and this copper top still really stands out. Here is where your charging port opens up. If you didn't spot the green number plate, how could you tell that this is an EV? And this is something I pointed out in my review of the earlier one. It looks like the badging has come in. So thank you to the team at Mahindra Electric, because now we know that this stands out as a proud electric vehicle. And the EV space is going to hot up in the next few weeks and months. And it's good to know that, well, this is one of the contenders in that particular battle. Have they actually made changes inside that I thought needed to be done? Well, let's find out. If you're trying to spot the differences from the previous XUV 400, it all happens as soon as you step inside the car. Everything looks different. This honestly looks like a new car from the badging right here to the fact that you have this really cool protruding 10.25 inch infotainment system with very smooth touch response. Yeah, You have practically everything working for you over here. You have well, your radio, your drive statistics, really cool EV stats that show up over here as well. As you can see, this is the amount of time left to charge. This is how much of energy I've been consuming and how we have around 147 kilometers left. In an ideal condition, this car can go all the way up to nearly 270 to 300 kilometers on a single charge. If you're driving it in its three modes, fun, fast, and fearless, if you go for fearless, there's a lot of magic that can happen in that particular mode. I'll show it to you when we take it for a drive. But then you're obviously going to get lesser average on this one and you'll get lesser range. So in terms of range anxiety, that hasn't changed much. The battery packs are pretty much the same like the previous one, nearly 40 kilowatts. But what really has changed is this particular cluster and then this cluster right here, fully digital, even the speedometer. This really now feels like an EV and wireless charging for your devices. A real boon because you have a place to keep your phone as well. Now, while you have a very responsive and intuitive touchscreen, I also like that there are the basic bare minimum buttons right over here, steering mounted controls, cruise control as well in this particular EV, really making sure that all the tech and engineering is in place. Now, if you're talking about the ports, you have two USB-A ports here. This one is for charging. You can also connect to the system. It also happens wirelessly. And then you also have with the rear AC went a USB-C charging port at the back. That means this is a car which now is also focused on the passengers in the rear seat. You can be driven around in this incredibly refined Mahindra XUV 400. Now, while the car does come with this parking camera, it's not a 360 degree view. But one thing that I hope comes with a software update would be adaptive guidelines. It seems like that's something they are working on, but let's put the car in drive. And remember, there are drive modes here, fun, fast, and fearless. It's currently in fun mode, which is the equivalent of eco. 
let's go into fast, right? Because that's something that I'm up for because fearless is another story. Should we try fearless actually? Well, there you go. We're in fearless mode. All I can say is don't try this at home. The car just bolts out the minute you put it in fearless mode. And honestly, you need to be someone who's completely in control because this can go from zero to 100 in what, eight, eight and a half seconds. And it's in fearless mode that you actually feel it. The car has a soft suspension, so you're not gonna feel too many bumps. It's a very comfortable drive, even for someone in the rear seat. A lot of torque, bucket loads of it, in fact, in the XUV 400 Pro. The drive quality is refined, and I must say this, but you need to be in control of the wheel when you are in fearless mode. In fast, I think, is the ideal mode to drive this car in this city, so I'm gonna put it in fast. So much to say about the XUV 400, but you get the drift. Improvements in every department. Refinement, and I'll tell you why I use that term in terms of tech, in terms of safety, in terms of the look and feel. Everything feels refined. It is much improved. It is, well, tech geek paradise inside the XUV 400 Pro. This particular car, at this price point, between 15 to 17 lakh, seems like a very, very worthy contender to be one of the top EVs in that particular segment. All I can say is, we've reviewed the previous version. Now, we've had this tech check of this version. The tech geeks called and Mahindra answered. That's about it on Tech Today. I feel like in 2024, if you say the word Samsung or use that brand name somewhere in a crowd, the answer you will get unanimously will be AI or artificial intelligence. So many AI launches from the world of Samsung. Another one to add to that list is Samsung's AI-powered TVs. What's this launch all about? Well, here's a Tech Today special report. Hello, everyone. This is Priya, and I am here in Bengaluru today at Samsung's one of the most iconic stores, Samsung Opera House. The company has launched a new lineup of AI-powered TVs. Now, we have heard a lot about artificial intelligence in the past couple of years. But what does it exactly mean for smart TVs? Let's find out. Samsung's new 2024 range of new QLED 8K TVs is powered by NQ8 AI Gen 3 processor. Some of the top AI-powered features are AI Upscaling Pro that transforms content to closely match the 8K display. AI Motion Enhancer Pro that utilizes a sophisticated motion detection algorithm to enhance clarity during motion intense content such as sports, helping users enjoy every moment. You will also get AI Auto Game Mode that recognizes both the game and the genre and automatically tailors the picture quality and sound quality settings. Smart Yoga feature can be experienced with an AI-enabled mat. You not only get real-time asana tracking tips, but also posture correction feedback. The Neo QLED 8K is available in 65, 75 and 85 inches size options. Neo QLED 4K is powered by NQ4 AI Gen 2 chipset. The Neo QLED 4K is available in five sizes of 55, 65, 75, 85 and 98 inches. Samsung is also introducing the world's first glare-free QLED, eliminating unnecessary reflection while preserving deep blacks and clear images under any lighting condition. It comes in sizes of 55, 65, 77 and 83 inches. Samsung's Neo QLED 8K range starts from Rs. 319,990. Samsung's Neo QLED 4K range starts from Rs. 139,990. Samsung's QLED range starts from 164,990. Well, Samsung has clearly pulled up its socks when it comes to AI. Whether it's Galaxy S24 smartphone series or the smart TVs lineup that we just saw. 
What we really want to see is, are the competitors going to jump on the AI bandwagon or play it safe? Over to you, Ayush. Well, after that charging experience with our new electric vehicle, I'm feeling charged up to take all your questions. My favorite part of the show where I get to answer all your tech queries. And the first one comes from Kostav. And he seems to be asking me my take on the humane AI pin. Now, we were at Mobile World Congress in Barcelona and I, of course, interviewed the founders of Humane, and I also was the only one to get a hands-on with the device back then. But have I tested it extensively? Not since that particular day, but I do have a bunch of thoughts. And I know why everyone seems to be writing to us about this. That's essentially because of the reviews that have come up in the past few hours, especially MKBHD, a very popular YouTuber, who has gone and completely destroyed the Humane AI pin in his review video. Now, this is one of the most trusted reviewers of tech gadgets around the world. And there's a larger question, which I'll get to eventually. But my take on the pin, yes, it is a first generation product, a work in progress. The hardware is absolutely outstanding. And maybe the thought is there, the intentions there, but the execution will get better with the next generation. Now to my conversation with the founders of Humane and getting that exclusive hands-on with the device, I can tell you one thing for sure. Their intention, at least before all these reviews, was and perhaps still is to replace the smartphone. It should be an iPhone killer altogether, but maybe that's something which is many years away. With their first generation, that's a very, very big ambition to have because we are so connected to our smartphone. For now, there's no app connecting you or tethering you to your iPhone. It operates in a completely different ecosystem, OS, and maybe that's been its shortcoming with this version. But honestly, if you're using it, I think the idea is special. The fact that you don't need to see your screen that much. For instance, if I use my Apple Watch, I see myself using my phone so much lesser when I can do so many things from my watch altogether. So if you have AI pinned up over here, looking really good with decent battery backup, and you know what, the data sets seem to be working. They're working with several companies on that. The idea and the heart and the intentions are in the right place. Execution will get better. The larger existential question seems to be what Marquez Brownlee did with that review and the sort of influence that social media creators now have and how responsible we need to be with our reviews of tech, auto and the like. Now, I firmly believe and all of us here on Tech Today believe that credibility trumps everything. That's his job. He's doing it right. Look, we have certain headlines that we use, titles, thumbs, but we do that with the right intentions so that you don't have to spend all your hard earned money on the wrong devices. And I think it is disruptive and that should be the bare minimum hygiene in an age where creators are just you know, taking all sorts of money for partnerships, not being transparent about it, and credibility has gone out of the window. So point number one to see that reviewers like us here on Tech Today and that particular review are being honest with their reviews and that credibility trumps everything is a breath of fresh air. In fact, that should be the bare minimum standard. Everyone should be following that. That doesn't seem to be the norm in India. A lot of creators do not tell you that they're endorsing products and that seems to be a huge problem, the lack of transparency. Also, the fact that the Humane guys actually saw this and kudos to them and they said that all of these points are pertinent points and we will work on this feedback and improve the product. That's how the entire ecosystem should work and that's how your hard-earned money is protected. If you stay tuned to credible content like here, what we do on Tech Today, I think you're Okay, we have time for one more question and I'm going to sift through a bunch of them. And this one is from Delzar. Delzar asks, what is the Tesla like to drive here in India? And well, we have a little bit of an inside scoop because Tech Today was the only team to be able to drive the Tesla Model 3, the most affordable model until today. I don't know, something's announced next week on Indian roads in Bangalore. Now, of course, this was not an India spec. This was the global version imported from the UK by one particular individual. But we got a hands-on with the car. And there were a bunch of things that we thought need to be fixed for an India model. Now, firstly, it's going to be the price. A lot of clarity with the new EV policy. We know that that duty could potentially come down from 100% on Elon's Tesla EVs all the way down to 15%. So that means a much more affordable Tesla for you and for me. Now, obviously, if that model was to come through the proper route with due approvals, maybe be made in India, there'd have to be a bunch of changes through a process called homologation. Now, largely what we thought from our drive that needs to be fixed is that low ground clearance. It's almost impossible to really drive a Tesla which was built 
somewhere else in the world here in India with our roads, with our speed breakers, it just doesn't seem to work. You can slalom through it, you've got to approach every bump at an angle that's not practical at all. A lot of the other EVs, the EQSs, the i7s have already adjusted for that here in India. Will Tesla do that? Elon Musk is not known to do that globally, but I think that's one major announcement he'll have to make. The tyres, the suspension, the ground clearance will need to be fixed for Indian roads. Also, the most critical question, what about superchargers? What makes a Tesla truly a Tesla? Is there going to be a supercharger network like there is in the US? When we were trying to charge this EV, it took maybe a couple of hours or one and a half hours to actually charge it from zero to 100. Whereas with Tesla superchargers, it's a whole different story. In 15 to 20 minutes, we've seen what superchargers can do in the US and in parts of Europe. Come April 22nd, will all of these questions be answered? Because if Tesla has to have that success story, because it's betting big on India and it needs India at this point, will these questions be answered? That's what we're going to be waiting for here on Tech Today. Well, yet another action-packed episode of Tech Today draws to a close. I'm going to finally unwind perhaps and enjoy my weekend. I hope you do as well. But there's a lot happening in the coming week with all the major Tesla and Elon announcements. Stay tuned to Tech Today across all our platforms. Until next week, I'm your host, Ayush Alavadi, saying adios.